Welcome to introduction to PyTorch. This course is a prerequisite to our other computer vision course where we talk about multiple state of the art computer vision techniques as well as SOTA data augmentation. In this course, we will give a very brief overview of PyTorch. We will talk about PyTorch tensors as well as how to manipulate them and various operations on PyTorch tensor. We will also talk about PyTorch computation graph as well as how to calculate the PyTorch gradients or PyTorch autograds. And at the end, we will also be building a custom small CNN using PyTorch. This basic and very quick course on PyTorch will get you up to speed to take up advanced courses in deep learning using PyTorch. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the course. Welcome to the first notebook in this course where we will be primarily talking about the Torch API available in PyTorch. Specifically, we will be talking about some of the operations, what you can do on Torch tensors as well as how to create Torch tensors and what is a Torch tensor. But before we do that, let me give you a very brief overview of what is PyTorch. PyTorch supports computation graph as well as PyTorch is a machine learning framework. It's an eager graph model, not like TensorFlow, where the computation graph is lazy, which makes your development very, very smooth, as well as you can take your idea from research to production in a blazing fast manner. PyTorch also supports all the operations on the GPU as well as on the CPU. As long as the GPU supports CUDA, and the compatibility of CUDA has to be greater than 3.0. First, let me talk about what is a Torch tensor. Tensor is nothing but a vector which can be single dimensional as well as multi dimensional. If you are not coming from a linear algebra background, you can think of vector just as a list of numbers. First, let's look into how to create Torch tensors. You can create a Torch tensor just from a list of numbers. So all you do, you pass a list to this toss tensor function, which will convert this list into a toss tensor. And you can check that using torch is tensor, which outputs true and you can print the tensor A. If you check the shape of a tensor, which you can do by A dot shape, in this case you will see it is just a 1D tensor with two numbers in it. Now if you see here, it's a list of list and each of the element in the list containing two elements. So you can create a multidimensional tensor like this using tos.tensor. Can you guess the dimension of this tensor? Pause for a moment. It's very easy to understand the dimension of this tensor. Each individual innermost tensor is two dimensional and there are three two dimensional tensor in it. So the dimension of this will be 3 cross 2. Let's see that below. You can check the shape and you will see it is 3 cross 2. It might be silly, but you can actually create an empty tensor, which is just an empty list. Also, you can create zero dimensional tensor, which is just a number. So toss of tensor 1.0, it's a tensor having zero dimensional. It's basically a scalar. You can also do something like true false tensor. So if you do toss.tensor false and toss.tensor true and you print this, these are 1D true false tensor. There is also very useful function in torch which is is non-zero, which can check if the tensor is full of zeros or non-zeros. So if we pass the false tensor and if we say is non-zero, it will return false because false is zero. Similarly, if you pass torch is non-zero, a true tensor, it will return you true because true is equal to 1. So is non-zero is true here. There is one more function in torch which is very useful and handy, which is called numel, which returns the total number of element in the tensor. So here we are creating a 2 cross 2 tensor, total number of elements in it is 4. If you do torch.numel, it will return you 4. Let's create few more tensor like zero tensor, one tensor and an identity tensor or identity matrix. 
So if you do toss dot once two cross three, it will return a two cross three tensor where each element is exactly one. Same thing you can do toss dot zeros, and I am creating a three cross two zero tensor, and you can create a identity tensor or identity matrix of five cross five, where all the diagonal elements will be equal to one. Everything else will be zero. One thing to notice: identity matrix does not have to be symmetric. So if you pass torch i five cross three, so five rows, three columns, you will see all the diagonal elements of this matrix will still be equal to one, but it's not a symmetric matrix. Same thing can happen where your number of columns is more than number of rows. So what I am doing: torch i three cross five, three rows, five columns. All the diagonal elements of this matrix will still be equal to one. You can convert a NumPy array to toss tensor very easily. First, we create a NumPy vectors of two cross three dimension using NumPy random randin function, which takes a low and the high and the size of the NumPy array or NumPy nd array. What you want to generate here, which is this, we can convert this tensor very easily to torch. All you have to do torch from numpy and pass the numpy array to it, and you can check the type of this. After the conversion, it will become a toss tensor. Before the conversion, it was numpy nd array. Let's talk about toss dot land function, which is very useful. Basically, this returns random numbers from a uniform distribution between zero and one. So, if you do toss dot land two cross three, it will generate you two cross three toss tensor. With all the elements are drawn from a uniform distribution. Similarly, you can do toss dot randn, which returns the tensor filled with random numbers from a normal distribution with mean zero and variance one, which is also sometimes referred to as standard normal distribution. So all you do pass toss dot randn and the shape of the tensor. So here I am returning a three cross four tensor. Lastly, but not least. As in NumPy, torch also supports randin, and the signature is exactly the same. It has the low, high, and the size. If you pass torch dot randin, low equal to one, high equal to five, and the shape of the tensor. Here I am saying create a one-dimensional tensor with two elements. You will get a tensor like this. Also using randin, as in rand and randin, you can create. So here I am passing two cross three, so it will create a two cross three torch tensor. With random integer between one to five. That's all about this notebook in this video. Let's look into more torch and torch gradients, etc., in upcoming videos. Thank you. Welcome to this notebook, where we'll be talking about more on torch tensors, as well as we'll introduce. Torch dot nn API, which contains all the API for Torch computation graph. So first thing we'll talk about how to index, slice, join, or mutate some tensor. This A stack is specifically how to join multiple tensors. So what A stack does is tag the tensor sequentially, horizontally, column wise. This kind of equivalent to toss dot concatenation function or toss dot cat function in the first axis for one D tensor and along the second axis for all the other tensor. Let's see what it means. So let's create two toss tensor A and B. One is three cross two dimensional, another is three cross three dimensional, which looks like this. If you do a stack, what will happen? These two. 2D matrix will horizontally get stacked. So you can understand for horizontal stacking, both the tensor has to have same number of rows. So let's create two other tensor. One is three cross two dimensional, and another is two cross three dimensional. If you try to stack them, you will possibly see this runtime error where it will talk about the dimension zero of these two tensors are different. One is three, one is two. Let's look into one more function, which is torch dot reshape. The behavior of reshape is not easily interpretable. Reshape does not always necessarily copy the tensor to a new dimension. If you see here, when possible, 
it will return the tensor with a new shape but you should not be depending on it whether it is doing a copy or giving a view there is a separate function which is toss dot view which we can always rely upon it will always return a view of the tensor not the copy of it so let's create a random tensor with two cross three dimension and let's reshape it to one dot six dimension so you'll see it will this flatten this 2d tensor into one more 2d tensor which is one cross six dimensional if you reshape the same tensor with minus one as an argument you will see it has flattened this tensor into a 1d tensor like this let's create a higher dimensional tensor which is three dimensional two cross three cross four so the innermost tensor each of them are having four elements if you reshape this again using a minus one as an argument you will see it will make a 1d tensor out of it which will be having 2 into 3 into 4 elements let's look into some reduction operation one of the simplest one we can think of is taking the mean values which is very useful when we calculate the average loss during our training process so let's create a 2 cross 3 dimension and if you do a toss dot mean it will basically give you a average of all the elements in it if you pass mean and dimension equal to 0 it will give you three element so all these three elements are the average of these three columns and if you pass dim equal to 1 you will get a 2d tensor these two numbers are the average of these two 1d tensors let's look into argmax which is a very useful function when you want to select top k predictions let's say torch also has torch dot top k but argmax has its own usage torch also has one more function which is torch dot max which returns two values the first of them are the actual maximum and the second one is the index of the maximums torch argmax will return only one value which are the indexes so let's create a integer tensor of three cross five dimension like this and if you say torch argmax it will look into all this element and it will return the index of the maximum element specifically the occurrence of the first maximum which is zero here if you pass dim equal to zero as usual it will look into these columns and in the first column the maximum is at zero position in the second column the maximum is at the second position and so on it will return you the index of all these five columns where the maximum is occurring if you pass dim equal to one you can guess what is happening it is returning with the index of the first maximum occurrence along these three 1d tensors along the rows and if you do toss dot max dim equal to one as i have mentioned the second return value is the actual indexes and the first one are the values let's look into some of the function of torch nn torch nn provides you the basic building blocks for the graphs as i have mentioned let's look into two very simple nonlinear activation function one of them is relu so relu of x is basically max of x comma 0 sometime a generalized relu can be max of x comma some threshold what it means as long as x is greater than 0 the relu of x is equal to x and if it is lesser than equal to 0 the relu of x is 0 so you can do this in torch you have to import torch nn as nn you define nn relu as your nonlinear activation function now let's say you have your input which is torch rand n of six numbers and output you pass this input through this nonlinear activation so this is your input and this is your output you will see as long as the input x is greater than zero all the values remain the same as soon as the values are less than zero which is happening at index one and index three it becomes zero so this is the output of your relu let's look into one more widely useful nonlinear activation which is sigmoid sigmoid of x looks something like this 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus x where x is your input you can write sigmoid of x like this sigmoid of x equal to 1 divided by 1 plus tos dot exponential minus x which is same as this function you create a 
tossed out rand n one cross three dimensional tensor and you pass it to your sigmoid function, it will give you this output. But you don't need to use your custom function. Torch n n has this sigmoid already defined. As usual, you define your m equal to n n sigmoid and pass this input a through this m or sigmoid nonlinear activation function. You should be able to see the same output as above. That's all about this video. Let's look into torch gradients in the next video. Thank you. Welcome to this notebook of Torch Autograd. What is Torch Autograd? It's basically PyTorch automatic differentiation engine that helps us to train the neural network without calculating this differentials with respect to the loss functions for each layer. So if you know what is a neural network, it's nothing but lot of nested nonlinear functions that are being applied in a layer-wise manner till you get the final output where you calculate the loss function. So a typical neural network irrespective of whether you are training it in a supervised manner or unsupervised manner like metric learning approach we talk about in the other course of deep unsupervised visual representations learning. You train the network in two steps. One is forward propagation and another is backward propagation. In the forward propagation your input data will pass through these layers, you will get the output, you will calculate the loss using the loss function, then you back propagate and keep calculating these derivatives of the error with respect to each layer's weights and biases. And with this process, you do a gradient descent and you optimize your neural network. Let's see what exactly happens internally. So let's say you have your x which is just 1. You have your w which is just 2 and you have your bias which is just 3 and you are calculating y which is w x plus b. It is just a linear equation. But if you think of neural network this w might be a matrix and this y will be w1, w2, w3 into x and on top of that there could be some nonlinear activation like we just saw maybe ReLU. So let's say we calculate y equal to wxb and then we do a y dot backward and we can see the gradient with respect to x and that will be equal to 2. Why is that? Because we are taking dy dx. So when you do that, it is just 2 if you know how derivative works or more specifically partial derivative of y with x or delta y by delta x which will be just equal to w or 2. That's what you see x dot grad as 2. Similarly, if you do dy dw, it will just be equal to x, which is equal to 1. And if you do dy db, the way partial derivative works, this part become constant. So, d db of this becomes 0 and d db of b is just equal to 1. That's why you see 2, 1, 1. Let's create a two layer computation graph. So you have w1, b1 and x. This is your first layer and you have w2, b2. This is your second layer. So layer 1 is w1 into x plus b1. Layer 2 is w2 into layer 1 plus b2. So if you expand this, it becomes w2 into w1 x plus b1 plus b2. Once you do that, if you do layer 2 backward, and if you print x dot grad, w1 grad, you will see these values. Let me explain you why x dot grad is 8. So if you do d dx of layer 2, basically a partial derivative, what you end up with d dx of this part. So only this part matters. Everything else is treated as constant the way partial derivative works and everything becomes 0. So d dx of w2 into w1 into x is nothing but w2 into w1, which is 2 into 4, which is equal to 8. So this is, so this is the way you calculate the gradients. Let's see what we typically do when we train a neural network. So let's say you have some input x, 
which is 10 cross 5 dimensional, which will be passed through a linear layer, single linear layer. So, there is no non-linear activation. All will happen is w into x plus b, whatever we have seen above. And this linear layer is 5 cross 2 dimensional. So, ultimately for each x, you will be getting two numbers at the end of your neural network or computation graph. And let's say you have your true values y for all these training example, so which are 10 cross 2 dimensional. Then let's then let's say we create a MSC loss or mean squared error loss. We define our optimizer, which is stochastic gradient descent with a learning rate of 0.01. .01. We generate the prediction by passing our x through this linear layer. Then we calculate the loss and then we do a loss dot backward. Once you do this, you can print the linear layer grad, which is nothing but partial derivative of loss with respect to w and the bias or the dl divided by db, which is the bias gradient. Then generally you do optimize a step, which is nothing but you are optimizing the weights of your layer by taking a small step using our gradients, which is nothing but the weight gets updated as w equal to w minus alpha, which is your learning rate into dl slash dw. The same thing is written here, the weight minus learning rate into weight grad data. And then we are just printing the loss. This is just for one step. So you keep doing this once you define your neural network or computation graph for number of iteration. Let's see exactly the torch pipeline for training a neural network in the next video. Thank you. Welcome to this video where we will talk about typical training pipeline using PyTorch. Here we will be using CIPR10 dataset. So we import the necessary libraries and we set the device equal to torch.device CUDA if CUDA is available. This is a function in Torch which tells you if you are running your code on a GPU system with compatible CUDA version. So here in the collab in the runtime I am using GPU. So that's why the device is CUDA. Now we define the CIPR10 classes. CIPR10 is typically used for object recognition challenge where there are 10 kinds of object which are mentioned here and it has around 60,000 low resolution 32 cross 32 color images where 50,000 is generally used for training and 10,000 for testing. Then you have to define some transformation pipeline. We talk about very advanced transformations in the other course of deep unsupervised visual representations learning, which is mentioned here. Here, the image is converted to a tensor and I am just normalizing it. And then you have to define your train data set and train loader. So, let's see what is in the train data set. I am taking the 0th item from the train data set and I am plotting the same, which is a frog here. The training pipeline typically looks like this. You define the number of epochs you want to train. You have your learning rate. Let's say we want to use some pre-trained ResNet. So, Torch Vision models has all the models pre-trained related to computer vision. I am using ResNet 18. You can also use ResNet 34 or ResNet 50. Keep this parameter pre-trained equal to true. So, it will download a ResNet pre-trained with ImageNet dataset. Then you put the model to device. Based on your system, it will go to GPU or CPU. Then you define the loss. You define the optimizer. Your total number of steps is nothing but the length of the train loader. You iterate through number of epochs and take the images by enumerating the train loader in a batch. I am using a batch size of 32. Then you get the image and label, put it to device pass the images through the model, calculate the loss using the criteria function you have defined here, which is cross entropy loss in our case, by passing the output and levels. Then we do loss dot backward as we have seen before and we take an optimizer step, which is nothing but w minus learning rate into dw. And you train it with the number of epochs. 
you can see the loss keep on decreasing and ultimately you can save the model state dictionary like this tos.save and later you can even load that state dictionary using tos.load. That's all about this video. Hope you like it. If you like the delivery of this videos, you should definitely check out our other course on deep unsupervised visual representations learning where we talk about multiple SOTA data augmentations and visual representation as well as state of the art computer vision papers. Thank you. Welcome to this notebook of custom CNN where we will build a very small custom CNN and train it using CIFR 10 dataset. The first part of the code nothing changes here. We have already seen this in torch pipeline. Then we will load the CIFR 10 dataset. Only thing changes here we are loading the train dataset as well as the test dataset because we will see the code of validation using our model in this notebook. So to load the test data set all you have to do pass the flag train equal to false. In that case it will load the test data set and if you pass the flag train equal to true it will load the train data set. As we have seen in our last torch pipeline we can check the size of the images. The number of channels is 3 and the image width and height is 32 cross 32. We have just plotted the first image which is a frog. Now for convolution we will be using PyTorch NN com 2 d API which takes the input number of images or the batch size, number of channel input, the size of your height of your input and the size of your width of your input. In our case for C410 this is 32, this is 32 and this is 3 and I am using a batch size of 100 so n is equal to 100. So the output will be this. More specifically the output when you pass it through this 2D convolution API is governed by this equation. So the output is very simple. Height out will be equal to height in plus 2 into padding. Padding 0 and padding 1 means for height and width you can use different kind of padding or asymmetric padding. But for simplification let us use the same padding. So height out is h in plus 2 into padding minus if you are not using any dilations here it will be kernel size because this minus and this minus it becomes plus and that gets cancelled out by this minus 1 divided by a stride again let us use a symmetric stride. So stride 0 and stride 1 will be same plus equal to 1 and we take the floor of this. So that is what happens in a typical image convolution when you use torch nn.com 2 d API. So to create a custom con net you have to create a class and you have to make sure the class inherits nn.module from PyTorch. Then in the init you call the init of this nn module or super comnet self init. Then I am creating very two simple layer. The first layer takes the input of three channels, output 16 channels, uses a kernel size of 5 with a stride equal to 1 and padding equal to 2. Then we have a batch norm, ReLU nonlinear activation and a max pool. Layer 2 is exactly the same. So if you pass a 3 cross 32 cross 32 image through these two layers, the output will be n cross 2048 dimensional. 8 into 8 into 32 is 2048. So at the end we have a linear layer which is 2048 into 10 or number of classes. In C per 10 there are 10 classes. So the linear layer is just a classifier from 2048 representation vector to the 10 classes. In the forward function you pass this image x, first we pass it through layer 1, then we pass it through layer 2, then we reshape. If you remember reshaping with minus 1 will make this 2048 dimensional, then we pass it through the fully connected layer and then we get this 10 numbers. So we initialize, so we initialize the con net like this, we define our criteria function which is cross entropy loss here because we are using 10 classes and we have our optimizer we are using an atom optimizer with a learning rate. So to train the model we will do exactly the same thing what we have done in our last video for the training pipeline. I am training this for 5 epochs. 
Now we will be also testing the model. To test the model, first thing you have to do, put the model in evaluation mode. Then you have to do with torch no grad. What this will do? This will stop the gradient propagation through this model. Then we go through the test loader, get the image and level, pass the image through our model, and we see the predicted using the torch.max function which we have already seen before. Then at the end we see how many predicted is equal to the true level. And then we sum it up and then we test the accuracy of this on 10,000 test images. With just 5 epochs, it is 67.36% which is pretty okay. That's all about custom CNN. Hope you play with this notebook and come up with your own custom CNNs. Thank you.